Hi, my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. So, uh, as I stated before in a previous video when we were doing the ER5 engine teardown, I said we are going to check the um, main journal dimensions for the crankshaft. So, I've decided, or it's a good idea, I've decided for this build that we're not going to take off the con rods because I don't want to buy new bolts and as far as I can tell, they should be pretty good after 30,000 miles. Anyway, we're just going to do a quick check just for so I can show you how you do it. So what you want to do is, I've got a picture on a screen right now of uh, how you make the dimensions, uh, how you measure the dimensions. Basically you need an XY of the diameter of each main journal and then you need to number them 1, 2, 3, 4 and where you want to measure them from. So as long as you're writing all this stuff down you should be okay. So according to the manual the main journal diameter service limit should be 35.96 and I'll stick that on the screen and I'll keep that in the corner. So what I'm going to do is you can see that these holes, these are the oil feed holes, you want to measure either side of these just make sure you remember which side you measure. So I'll start with the end the end um, journal first and what I've got here is 36 36.5 and in our manual that seems good 36 36.0 oh, 36 36.12 sorry we'll go 90 degrees from that we'll try again 36 Zero 0.08 then we'll check here there's a lot more wear in the middle which you kind of expect with a rocking couple and here I've got 36.01 I'll go perpendicular to that and what's that 36.04 all sounds good so what I'll do is I'll run through all these really quickly and then I'll put up on the screen my findings right so what I've got here is I've got all four of my journal uh, journals drawn out like this and then we've got the X and the Y measurement all at 90 degrees to each other so they're all perpendicular so you get a nice idea of the roundness of the eccentricity um, of the journal. So what we've got here is we've got 35.9990990 millimetres, not 9999. And then we've got the Y measurement in green. In between each measurement I have then uh, written down the difference between the two. So there's five microns difference between this one, zero on this one, one on this one, and four on this one. So you'll see that the outsides are actually more worn than the uh, insides and that's all to do with rocking couples. What happens is is the crankshaft tends to flop like this because the journal in the middle, this bearing here, is a bearing here and a bearing here. These are very close to each other where out here there's a lot more weight which is all this weight of your con rod and your actual throws and everything else like that and then you've got another bearing out here. So what happens is is the crankshaft tends to wobble and oscillate like this like a bird, because one piston fires, then another, and then you get this what you call rock, rocking couple effect, which they try and balance out, and hence why the ER5 has a balancer shaft, uh, which we'll get to later. Any road, so the numbers in orange are the deviations, the maximum deviation of each journal from our 36mm bang on, and there's 10, 5, 8, and 8, which to be quite honest aren't that bad. There's 10 microns, 5 microns, 8 microns, and 8 microns. This is how much wear has occurred from this number. But remember, this, these crankshaft, this crankshaft might not have started off like this. Um, even so, that's not so bad. You'll have more wear in the bearings than this because this is hardened and ground steel. All the bearings are softer. That's the whole point. Of them meant to wear. This, the orange ones are only a guideline because we do not know our initial um, grind dimension. Basically when the um, crankshaft came out of the factory, what was its dimension? 
the chances of it being 36 bang on for every single journal, meh, not when they're mass producing thousands of them. But anyway, this gives you an idea of how to measure, how to lay out, and what you're actually kind of looking for. And it's really these deviation numbers that you're looking for. And the deviation between the whole crankshaft, all these numbers are way, are a long way off. You have got another six microns on this one, away from this number. Uh, another six, another eight there. So yeah, you know, they're a long way from this service limit. Um, it's done 30,000 miles. And the other thing is as well is this surface, this service limit, this number here is for the optimum design so the bike is running really nice and efficiently etc. Um, if you get rid of this number, you know, you can run engines to the fact where the fact where they're sloppy. There are engines out there, diesels and stuff that have been running for 250,000 miles. It's not imperative that you have to stick with these numbers. For some components it is but what I'm saying is, is if your bike's running fine and you're taking the engine apart just to do, I don't know, a gearbox repair, you measure stuff and you're hovering or you are on this number, but the bike was running fine, you don't have to shit yourself and get a new crank or get a re-grind and get some new bearings in. What you really want is to see what the deviation is, and 10 microns is fuck all. You do need usually to insert your bearing caps into your bottom case and top case, put some plastic gauge in there, and measure the oil clearance between your crank and your bearings. I'm not going to do this, uh, it's a lot of fanning around and all the rest of it, and this engine has only done 30,000 30, miles, and from my all my little preliminary measurements and stuff, I'm pretty happy. After 30,000 miles, this shouldn't really be a toast engine. If you have an engine that you don't know what the mileage is, and especially if it's an old one, like a 1970s engine or stuff like that, it's very well worth doing. And when we do the CX500, we will be doing that. So I'll leave that for another video. Uh, for the time being, this is all good. I'm basically just trying to spec out everything before we go and insert everything into the uh, bottom crankcase and then seal her up.